rhinosinusitis, often referred to as just sinusitis, is a symptomatic inflammation of the mucosal lining of the nasal cavity and paranasal sinuses. The paranasal sinuses are air-filled extensions of the nasal cavity and are composed of the frontal, maxillary, sphenoid and ethmoid sinuses. Their function is to lighten the weight of the head, humidify inspired air, increase voice resonance and also support the immune defence of the nasal cavity. Acute rhinosinusitis is the term used for cases with a duration under 4 weeks, subacute if 4 to 12 weeks and chronic if 12 weeks or more. It's estimated that adults have 1 to 3 episodes of acute viral sinusitis annually and roughly 10% of the adult populations in the UK and US are affected by chronic sinusitis. It often results from an interplay between a predisposing condition such as allergic rhinitis or an environmental trigger, a viral infection and the subsequent inflammatory response within the sinonasal mucosa, the ostia which are the openings connecting the sinuses to the nasal cavity, and osteomyatal complex which is a drainage pathway for several sinuses can become blocked due to the edema and mucus production associated with the inflammation. With a blocked ostium, oxygen within the sinus is absorbed into mucous membranes generating a negative pressure which causes pain and also releases hypoxia inducible factor which contributes to inflammation and mucus production. If the vacuum is maintained, transidate is brought into the sinus as well as the ongoing inflammatory response which can result in positive pressure, which is also painful. Stasis of the secretions provides a breeding ground for bacteria and so a risk of secondary bacterial infection. The majority of acute cases are caused by viral infections such as rhinovirus, parainfluenza and respiratory syncytial virus. Duration of symptoms above 10 days is more suggestive of a bacterial infection and in acute cases, the most common bacteria include Haemophilus influenza in around 40%, Streptococcus pneumoniae in 35%, Moraxella catarralis in around 20%, and Beta hemolytic streptococci, such as Strep pyogenes, in around 5%. In chronic cases, however, the exact role of microorganisms is not clear, but organisms found a different including Staphylococcus aureus in around 50%, gram-negative rods in 20%, such as Klebsiella, Pseudomonas and E. coli, while Haemophilus influenza and Strep pneumoniae only make up around 2-4% to of cases. Nasal polyps are found in 25-30% to of chronic cases and is actually termed a separate entity of chronic rhinositis with nasal polyps. Other contributing factors affecting the drainage or inflammation of the sinuses include impaired mucociliary clearance and cystic fibrosis or primary ciliary dyskinesia, structural factors like septal deviations, as well as environmental factors such as hay fever, smoking and pollutants. Acute rhinosinusitis typically presents with a history of recent viral upper respiratory tract infection and viral cases tend to peak earlier and gradually resolve. As mentioned, duration of symptoms above 10 days without improvement is more suggestive of a bacterial infection, or if there is an initial improvement in symptoms followed by a deterioration, known as double sickening. Symptoms of sinusitis generally include facial pain or pressure, nasal discharge which can be purulent, or a sensation of a drip at the back of the throat termed post-nasal drip, nasal congestion, headache with vertex headache being suggestive of sphenoid sinusitis, cough can be present as can sore throat, hyposmia meaning reduction in the ability to smell and fever are other features. Also note that rhinosinusitis can lead to an exacerbation of asthma and complications although rare can include fungal infections, facial cellulitis, orbital or intracranial infections. 
Diagnosis is primarily clinical, meaning no specific tests or imaging are required. Physical exam findings include facial tenderness on palpation, middle ear effusion, post-nasal pharyngeal secretions or exudate, tender maxillary dentition, meaning the upper teeth, or mucosal erythema or purulent discharge on nasal cavity examination with rhinoscopy. Endoscopy is used typically in refractory cases, including flexible options which are preferred in children, which can show nasal discharge or drip, polyps and edema. As mentioned, lab investigations are not typically used, however lab cultures can help with antibiotic selection, especially in those who are refractory to empirical treatment or are immunocompromised. If complications are suspected, then CT imaging is the modality of choice. The American Academy of Otolaryngology criteria feature 12 weeks or more of at least two of mucopurulent discharge, nasal obstruction or congestion, facial pain or pressure, and hyposmia. Acute viral rhinosinusitis is generally self-limiting, with symptoms tending to improve after three to five days. During this, supportive treatment in the form of over-the-counter analgesia like paracetamol or ibuprofen can be helpful, as well as intranasal corticosteroids, particularly in those with congestion. However, these are often used incorrectly. They are best used with using the opposite hand to the nostril, aiming slightly posteriorly and laterally with gentle inhalation. Decongestions like oxymetallazine are options however are not recommended in longer courses beyond 3-5 to five days due to the risk of rebound congestion. Topical anticholinergics like ipratropium can be used in rhinorrhea and saline irrigation which can involve mixing distilled water, baking soda and salt and using a large medical syringe or squeeze bottle and gently squeezing with the tip in the nostril. This then propels the water through the nose and out of the mouth or the other nostril. Antibiotics are only recommended in select patient groups, for example severe disease, persistent or worsening symptoms, or immunocompromised patients, because symptoms often resolve without intervention, and there is a risk of antimicrobial resistance. Coamoxiclav is generally the first line agent if they are indicated, with doxycycline or clarithromycin as options in penicillin allergic patients. Intranasal steroids and nasal irrigation are also the main treatment in chronic cases, often recommended over periods of three months, with antibiotics being used for exacerbations. In those with nasal polyps, initial management is very similar. However, there are biological therapies targeting the inflammatory pathways such as dupulimumab, which is a monoclonal antibody against interleukin-4 and 13R, and omalizumab, which is a monoclonal antibody against IgE. Surgery is considered in those in whom there has been little or no improvement with medical therapy after three months. <laughs>